Today on Engineering Newswire, we're printing multi-material in color, detecting mines with our shoes, cutting catalytic converter costs, and riding the first Porsche ever made. It's not fast. <laughs> In the year of the 3D printer, there will be multi-material 3D printing in color. This week, Stratasys launched the Objet 500 Connex 3 Color Multi-Material 3D Printer, the first and only 3D printer to combine colors with multi-material 3D printing. Look at that, just magnificent. And the shoe isn't that bad either. Connex 3 features a triple jetting tech that combines droplets of three base materials to produce parts in rigid, flexible, and transparent color materials, as well as colored digital materials, all in a single print run. Think about it, all the characteristics of an assembled part without assembly or painting. Time to market what? Now you can validate designs and make quicker decisions before jumping into production. Let's see this thing in action. Oh, wait, oh yeah. We don't have one. What do you think, Bruce? I guess we'll, uh, I guess we'll go to a click. Can we go to a click? Let's go to a click. The printer also features six palettes for new rubber-like tango colors, ranging from opaque to transparent colors in various shore values. Just like this little guy's hat. A scientist at the Imperial College of London has created a catalytic converter that can not only cut manufacturing costs, but cut fuel consumption in a standard vehicle by 3%. For those of you who don't know, a catalytic converter is the component in a vehicle's exhaust system that eliminates some harmful emissions. What's that? You all knew that? <laughs> well, sorry to waste your time. The new design uses up to 80% less rare metal. Current catalytic converters use precious metals such as platinum to eliminate emissions, making manufacturing costs really expensive. Because these metals currently account for up to 60 to 70 percent of the cost of the component. Lab tests suggest that this new catalytic converter deteriorates by only 4 percent over a distance of approximately 62,000 miles, compared to 35 percent for a standard catalytic converter. The new design increases fuel efficiency by preventing back pressure or the buildup of gases that can make the engine work harder. Because we all know how that works. Backed up gas. Ferdinand Porsche was 22 years old when he designed and built his first car, the Edgar Lohner electric vehicle C2 Phaeton model, also known as the P1 because it was Porsche's first car. This thing looks more like a horse-drawn carriage than a car. Well, after more than 115 years off the grid, the P1 was recovered from a warehouse and is now on display at the Porsche Museum in Stuttgart, Zuffenhausen. With a top speed of 21 miles per hour, the car could travel three to four hours without charge, or approximately 49 miles. The car was powered by a three horsepower rear-mounted electric engine driving a 12-speed control unit, and the battery, a Tudor System 44-cell accumulator battery with 120 amp hours, weighed just over 1,100 pounds, bringing the car to a total weight of 2,977 pounds. Taking its first drive on June 26, 1898, the car was way ahead of its time, 116 years, and EVs still lack market acceptance. It even raced in the International Motor Vehicle Exhibition, driving 24 miles and finishing 18 minutes before anyone else. More than half didn't even cross the finish line due to technical problems. Technical problems with an electric car. Who knew it was also a 19th century problem? Columbia-based Lemur Studio Design has created a wearable mine detector that fits into a shoe. It tells you where deadly landmines are located. The detector, Save One Life, was created to help save lives in Columbia, where more than 10,000 people have been maimed since 1990, when thousands of landmines were left behind during Columbia's guerrilla war. The detector consists of a coil printed on a thin conductive material, which produces an electromagnetic field and in turn detects another electromagnetic field from large pieces of metal nearby, within a six and a half feet radius. If it finds a mine, the device sends a signal to a wristband telling the wearer to watch out or change direction. Mine detecting shoes. <laughs> I hope that's never a purchase that I legitimately have to ever consider. Well, unless they're fashionable.
Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm David Manti, and this has been your Engineering Newswire. <gasps> no! <laughs> oh, that was so not supposed to happen! <laughs>